your presence. Cast us not away from your presence, O Lord. Let the world do whatever that it pleases. O Lord, give us your presence. Because in your presence, O Lord, don't have a cost in your presence, O Lord. Him in your presence, O oh Lord. Him of glory in your presence, O oh Lord. El Shaddai in your presence, O oh Lord. There is always fullness of joy. Thank you that God you paid the debt that you did not owe. Because pain on our behalf, we can boldly come before your presence. If we need to purchase before we come to your presence, none of us would have been able to come, Lord. But the least among us, you have called us your own. What a sweet father are you, Lord. We are forever grateful. We are forever grateful to the cross. We are forever grateful to Martin Calvary. We are forever grateful for the blood that was cast out. We are forever grateful, oh Lord, because you care. We are forever grateful, oh Lord. Ah. We are forever grateful. Ah. We are forever grateful. We are forever grateful, oh Lord. Calling the outcast that rejected. Lord, we are forever grateful. Ah. You are my gracious Lord. You are my redeemer. You are my savior. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Let it be. Mm. 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 That is sweet move of the Spirit of the Lord this afternoon here in the house. Nobody will leave this sanctuary the same way that you came here this afternoon. The Lord is highly enthroned. The prophet Zacharias said that therefore let all flesh be silent. Because he has resurrected from his inhabitants. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I am forever grateful, O Lord. I am forever grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. In a mood of worship, just have your seat. Mm, thank you, Lord. Because my gracious Redeemer, my Savior, our I love my Jesus, this love. You are my gracious redeemer, my 
from there is something so special here in the house because it is so sweet to trust in Jesus So many wonderful things in our midst. And we have just entered into a time of building our homes together as families. Because I've come to know and believe that without a solid family, we don't have any church. Therefore, I am particular about how you made your home. If you have a peaceful home, you have a peaceful church. If you have a glorious home, you have a glorious church. If you have a church that is full of misunderstanding is a result of full of misunderstanding in our individual homes. We take this opportunity to give our brothers from Kiel a massive hand of welcome. Welcome them this afternoon. Just welcome them. Just welcome them. Just welcome them. Hallelujah. I'm dealing with a subject Right from this week, Wednesday, when I started dealing with the how to bring and how to build, how to edify your homes, and every good home will have a good papa and a good mama. You can never have a home without a strong woman. Therefore, if we are belittling our wives and our mothers and our sisters, we are not doing ourselves any good, hallelujah. Amen. It is easy to build a house. Very easy. If you want to build a house, it's not difficult at all. Yes. But to make a home out of that house is the greatest work. Yes. That's why many of you have a very beautiful mansion and nice apartment, but your wife doesn't want to live with you there because you, there is no home there. And that is the reason why I am here, how to build that home, how to make that home, hallelujah. And I deem it as a very great honor to have you all here this Sunday again 
The truth is, before even I came to office, three people came to Papa. I said, Papa, you can't leave us just like that. Let us continue the seminar. I say, let me observe my protocols. Let me at least today give you something small. By 1.30, I'll be through with you, and we do our meetings. Hallelujah. Amen. But Wednesday, we will continue. Amen. We can't eat all of them this afternoon. By 1.30, I'll leave you. Somebody should tell A gracious redeemer, he will redeem you this afternoon. There is no marriage that you can repair. No marriage can die unless you want it to die. Because any good relationship deserves somebody who is powerful. At least when the marriage hits rocks or we divorce, only one person has a broken heart. If two of us who are hard to break, then I don't think you'll divorce. So in the relationship, at least one of them is in love. One is just playing Olu Allah with closing one eyes as if he's a lover, but it's not true. Among it, one of them is loving. And the one that is in love, when there is a situation, there's a problem, he alone or she alone have broken heart. Why? Because you fell. Anytime you fall, it's dangerous. I'll please be seated by the message of God that stand in love, don't fall in love. Because love is not blind. And we have learned a whole lot right from Wednesday and Friday. And I'm teaching a very interesting subject that I've captured it, building a great marriage. Building a great marriage. Let me see if I can work it out this afternoon for you. Building a great marriage. Build a great marriage. And for any marriage to be successful, the secret behind any successful marriage still remains a secret. I know you didn't get it. If you see any successful man or woman that have made it in their marriage, they have secrets. And it is their secret. And some of the secret is what I am unveiling this week. Hallelujah. Any secret behind beautiful homes still remains a secret. And as a family, we share secrets. I will have my privacy, but I can't keep any secret from you. And because I love you, let me show you every secret. What makes me a happy man? Hallelujah. Amen. There is a mystery. And that mystery still remains somebody's mystery. And for you to work it, we caption three F's. The letter F. The first F is that you must have faith in your wife. You must have faith in your husband. Some of us are waiting for a small mistake and then they run away for you to say that, aha, uh -huh, I told you so. Have faith in her and have faith in him. And how to build the faith, we did it very powerful Wednesday here. I won't go back again. And then last Friday also we had the second F. The second F is that don't take your wife or your husband as an enemy. She is your best friend. Do you have intimacy in the relationship? Do you see him or her to be your friend? And I define intimacy by Papi's own definition that intimacy, if into me you can't see, we don't have intimacy. And we learn so many things about the intimacy. And today I want to give you the last F, hallelujah. Yeah. Who knows that F? I'm not here today to do it, and we're going to do it together. After two minutes, but still I'll be through with you. Who can help me with that F? Uh, we have done the friendship. Friendship is a brother of fellowship. I'm happy if you come to church like that. Uh -huh. Faithfulness, beautiful, that's a very good F. Uh -huh. Favor, hallelujah. Friends, forgiveness. Uh -huh. More F. Fulfilling, beautiful, hallelujah. Uh -huh. Fellowship. Fellowship will still form into the family of the friendship. F. 
F. Faith. Forever. Wonders. He was not here. He was here. We got it last Friday. Wonderful. Uh-huh. Finances. Finances. Hey. Fruitfulness, fullness in Christ. Hallelujah. Shall we give Jesus Christ a very wonderful offering? This is the family. We learn together. We study together. But you know what you are saying? It is true. That's why we need more days. All this, if I pick all of them one by one, it means it will take us three years. Hallelujah. Because the F, where you are coming from, you believe it. And it is true. Actually, you've mentioned it. Somebody got it. The third that we used to build a great marriage is what? How did you do it? Or somebody has betrayed me behind. Forgiveness. 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 This is one of the most sensitive subject that we don't know how to handle it. Forgiveness. Conflict and problems in marriage is unavoidable. There is no man, no woman that can tell me that he or she, that marriage, we are not going to have conflict. It is unavoidable. You can't. That is the reason why this third F is very much important. Why? Let me define the marriage from this perspective. God is not going to help you. You see, our understanding of the word marriage totally is different. Some people think that if you sleep with a woman, it means you have married. It has nothing to do with marriage. Because many people are sleeping, they are not married, isn't it? <laughs> marriage has a lot to do with a loving, lasting, longing covenant. Loving, lasting covenant between two imperfect people. Let's just say imperfect. imperfect. You can never be perfect and your wife can never be perfect in the sight of God. Between two imperfect people that have come together to seek the perfection of each other. So if you are not perfect and I'm not perfect, we are bound to definitely make mistakes, isn't it? Yes. Therefore, if I am in the course, why my background is totally different from your background? How I was brought up is totally different from how you are brought up. So definitely we will crash. In the course of living, we will crash. But when we trust, what do we do to build that marriage? How possible that somebody who comes from the southern and you come from the northern part, you've come together as husband and wife, your mother is not my mother, your father is not my father. So even two sisters, brothers and sisters, they crash. Teeth and tongue even divide. I get it now. So for you to be able to build it till Christ comes, there should be this key. If you don't know how to forgive, forget you can't marry. Because do you know, what actually made the marriage beautiful is more fight. The more we fight, the more we solve. The more we rub shoulder, the more that we see the beauty of the marriage. Hallelujah. You see, the day that your wife told you that, you know, I had it, please, I'm sorry. How did you feel? Knowing very well that he's at fault. But he just apologized. How do you feel? The marital setbacks. If you really want to recover all marital setbacks, then it is this way. Forgiveness. Forgiveness. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive. Ability to forgive is someone that has something to do with God. Because human will err. To err is who? Human. But to forgive is what? Divine. 
If you can't forgive your own wife, I don't know who you can forgive again. If you can't forgive your own husband, I don't know who you can forgive again. Let us recover from all marital setbacks this afternoon. All the setbacks you are going to recover from it. All. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one, anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forget you, so you must also do. So you must also what? Do. Even as Christ forget you, so you must also do. Hallelujah. Replace marital bitterness with forgiveness. Some of us, we are bitter. We are being embittered. But any time you let bitterness take control of their marriage, you can't get a better marriage. You need not to be bitter, but you must be better. So what we are coming to do this afternoon is to remove every bitterness in our hearts. Replace marital bitterness with what? Forgiveness. The only antidote that can help you to let bitterness come out of your heart is ability to forgive a wife, a husband, a sister, a child, a mama, a father. Because bitterness is very dangerous. I'm going to teach you something because you know the word bitterness, eh? it is a root and it has cousins and brothers and sisters. Immediately bitterness sets in. All anger, all frictions, all tensions, all segregation, all malice, all resentment is the root of bitterness. So the reason why you are not getting the best, you are not enjoying your wife to that maximum level is because of bitterness. So this afternoon, we are coming to replace forgiveness. If you put forgiveness there, bitterness will run away. Let me help you with the root where we got bitterness from. Two. Where you got bitterness from? Understanding the root of bitterness. Where we got it from? Today I'm going to show you something. This very powerful church in the land of Ephesus. Paul admonished them that bitterness is so dangerous that if that root comes, it will have a very strong stem and the branches, the things that they are going to produce, you'll be surprised. Ephesians chapter 4, verse number 31 to 32. Let all bitterness, let's just say all bitterness. All How many bitterness? All. Some? All. Few? All. Two? All. Three? All. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put where? Away from you. With how many malice? Oh. And be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even. As God in Christ forgive you. Let all bitterness. Look at what bitterness can give to people. Five things bitterness give birth to. And immediately bitterness set in in a relationship. You can have the most beautiful son, the most beautiful daughter. The reason why I let the children stay here this afternoon for the service is that some of these children will have bitterness. Children need to learn how to forgive mama or papa. Even some of us, we have vowed that even if you die, I won't come to your funeral. That is the way bitterness. Bitterness is very dangerous. It's a spirit that it can destroy a whole generation. And I want to approve this bitterness from our homes. Approve this bitterness from the church. Approve this bitterness from our marriages. 
Because if you let bitterness sit there, I know a woman that out of bitterness, she aborted a baby and that was the end. She couldn't have a womb again to even produce another children for the husband. Because the man did something and out of anger, she was pregnant, the husband didn't know anything about it. She went to see the abortion sponsors and they sponsored her and then she aborted the baby and that was the end. Till today, God showed her something. Her bitterness can destroy a generation. I don't want you to pick this subject very light. Forgive. Forgive. Who will wrong you? Who will offend you? Forgive. Forgive. I'm not saying forgiveness is easy. Forgiveness is a paradox. It is something that must eat deep in you. Forgiveness is not a small thing. But learn how to forgive. If you forgive your own husband, you haven't done anything. You know, I won't talk to you again. I won't talk to you again. Hey, people, talk to him. Yeah. And they will come. He will close his mouth. Even he won't talk to you. Forgive. Because what bitterness can destroy the whole children. So please, if we really want to build the marriage strongly, this F should be the key word. Learn how to talk about the issue. And if you talk about it, it is over. Don't keep it. Why do you need that thing for? Let it go. Let it go. When we were worshiping, even it's possible. If you, you came to church together with your husband, but you don't talk to her. Anytime I lift up your hands before the Lord. Some men doesn't even talk to their own wives and they come to the house of God. What are you talking to do? Let bitterness go away. Let bitterness go away. And this bitterness I'm talking about, if you understand its roots, where it is coming from, and you can really feel it, you are gone. You are gone. A wife that knows how to forgive a husband, a husband that knows how to forgive a wife, never struggle in the relationship. If you really want to live long, learn how to forgive each other. Hallelujah. Learn how to forgive each other. I have a quote that is a personal experience quote. Before I teach you the principles of overcoming bitterness. There is no way you can tell me, Papi's quote, you love somebody without forgiveness. And there is no way that you can forgive somebody that you don't love. If you tell me that you love me and I am, and you can't forgive me, you are lying. It's not true. It's not love. So my first quote is, there is no love without forgiveness. And there is no forgiveness without love. Among all of us, who really deserve the love of Christ? Before even we sin, the blood has already been shed for you. He has forgiven all of us our iniquities, our sins. That is the perfect love. Before even you sin, the blood has been shed for you. You can never tell me that there is love but there is no forgiveness. So, if you have not acted with such bitterness, you are very dangerous. You can destroy me. Speak it out. Voice it out. Be vocal. And be free once and for all. Hallelujah. Amen. I will tell you the natural symptoms of somebody who is full bitter. When they make makeups, the makeup doesn't come. There is nothing beautiful that fits them. When you play a 
joyful song, they can't dance. Any good thing is not good for them. Because in them, they are embittered. And within them, it is only God that can save them. Hallelujah. Therefore, thou shalt not trespass if you step on his or her toe. Ah, ah, ah. Bitterness is very dangerous. Bitterness is very dangerous. But the truth in what I'm just saying is that if you forgive, you are a free person. The more you decide not to forgive a brother, a sister, you swallow him. You swallow the person. Meanwhile, the person is free, but you are heavy. So please, in relationship, expect misunderstanding. Expect conflict. Expect disagreement. Agreement, disagree. That makes relationship very beautiful. Hallelujah. Amen. Because we keep on rubbing so that one day I will get it. Learn how to forgive. Learn how to forgive. I swear, me, this very day, I will hey, forgive. 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 Get my single coat. It will help you. I'm saying that you can never tell me you love me without forgiving. And you can never forgive once you don't love. And this single coat in the night when I was lying down, the Lord spoke to me about this very word. A happy marriage is the union of two good forgivers. You want to happen to be happy marriage, isn't it? You want to have happiness there. The only way that two of you, you can enjoy each other effectively at home is being good forgiver. If two of you learn how to forgive each other, unfortunately, this forgiveness, other people have turned it to become another thing. Instead of them to forgive, they have become fault finders. It's another F. They are looking for the shortcoming, the limitation of the wife or the husband to use it against her all the time. You are a fault finder. Why would you find fault if you open your eyes? So father, that you have opened your eyes, you see something because the woman, the man is still a human. So if you are a fault finder, you will find thousand faults about your life partner. Hallelujah. Forgive. Forgive. Good marriages, any good marriage that you see that these people are blessed, they are happy, is a result of the two of them being good forgivers. They forgive each other. Hallelujah. Forgive. Forgive. Those that have decided not to sleep with their wives again, repent tonight, this afternoon. Hallelujah. Those that have decided to let the men come to the palace this month, hey, open the door for them to come. Hallelujah. Let us have forgiveness. Forgiveness. I told you last Friday, when you come to the church, I know who is blessed and who is not blessed. Who is baptized and who is not baptized. Sometimes you see that we struggle before we read the presence of God because you are too embittered. Be cool, be cool. Life is very shit, people. Be cool. If you know, if you take it cool and you become flexible, you receive a lot of gifts. Be flexible to receive a lot. I won't allow, I won't destiny. Nobody over my dead body. Hey. You, if you die, you marry another one. <laughs> it will be over your dead body. Because immediately you, are, you die, the laws of marriage allow him, allow her. So if it is over your dead body, me, I will come and bury you and I will find a different girlfriend for him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Relax and enjoy him now. For how long will you Struggle with your wife, with your husband. 
Say, I will pursue forgiveness. forgiveness. So when you take initiative, nobody can help you. Pursue it. Many people will be asking me a lot of questions. Papa, do you get angry? Papa, do you get angry? Hey, I am just like you. I have feelings too. I can act the same way that you act too. But I have decided that I refuse to be offended. You can never offend me. How do you offend me? It's the decision. The day that you want to be so wild with me, that's the day that I give you more fans. I give her fans at them. She doesn't know whether to respond to the fans. She doesn't know whether she'll be angry. I make songs for her because I refuse to be offended. You know, sometimes I see she's not responding. Then I'll change it. I'll have a different way. Hey, people, if you want to live long, it's in your hands. Oh. If you want to die prematurely, they are all in your hands. Hallelujah. I can give her a first song. She will sleep, I will still sit on her giving her fans. But nobody wants to live there in that home because there's no home. Nobody can make that home for you. That beautiful home is in your hands. How you made it is how children will have to be there. You know, I have a very small apartment, but everybody wants to come there because there's home there. But people have very beautiful peak, but nobody wants to go there. Do you know why? That place is a museum. We don't touch anything, we don't hold anything. Children can play. And what is the sense of bringing them here to this world? People make a home. Make a home. When they touch for it, and so on. Buy a new one, darling. The purpose of a man working and getting money is for a woman to enjoy it for you. If a woman is not enjoying your money, you are not a man. The purpose of God making a woman is just to be loved. We need to love them. They don't need anything. Just love them. You can love them and their head become too big. They don't know where they are going left or right. Just love them. Just love them. Just love them. That is the purpose of God making a woman. And you, a mama, your face is hard. A papa face is hard. Who will stay at home? and receive blessings. Let us check these principles and I leave you. I have five minutes. How to the principles to override bitterness. This one will help you. I tell you, we need to pursue something. Hallelujah. Take these principles and I leave you. Forgiveness helps the forgiver more than the forgiving. He has taken one of my spiritual lessons again. The one that forgives you are powerful than the one that receives the forgiveness. The one that knows how to forgive. You are always powerful than the one that always, you say, I, you are at fault. I'm always at fault. You are always right. Mrs. Right. Take it. If you really want to be stronger in that marriage, Mr. Wright, forgive. The one that forgives, you are always stronger than the one that is receiving the forgiveness. When I'm gone, you'll get it. When I'm gone, later, you'll get it. If you want to be stronger in the relationship, be the first mama, the first papa to initiate forgiveness. 
seen anybody who plead for forgiveness and he became, when he was too tall, he became too short. Tough people forgive. Weak people keep things in them. Because a tough person is a prey thinker. He is an originator. He wants to move ahead. Be annoyed, be angry, resentment, pains, unforgiving, mindless, clamor, wrath. Everything is in him. So he's standing at one place. He is waiting for a time of explosion. You will not get me. You will explode by yourself. Hallelujah. They are certain people, they have set a trap. I am waiting. Ah, she must not cross. Nobody will cross. If I don't cross your trap, what do you do to me? Learn how to forgive. The one that forgives is always stronger. The one that is stronger. Let me tell you somebody who forgives. Outwardly, eh? you greet us, you shine. Unforgiving spirit makes you gloomy. It makes you clumsy. It makes your face very hard. Because you have swallowed a person. I read the book of Isaiah chapter 15. He, he prescribed a, a fasting for us. That before even you say you will fast, make sure that you are forgiving all these people. Forgive them. Forgive, forgive, forgive. You finish 21 days fasting, but still unforgiveness. Even your own husband you are fasting with, you say you are fasting. Forgiveness is the key to build. Let me teach you to the principles that you close for now. How to override bitterness. This will help you. Principles of overcoming bitterness. You must perceive that me, this thing that I have been embittered, I will come out. And the writer of the book of Hebrews gave us a clue how to do it. Hebrews. He gave us how to do that. And I'll take this one and then I'll leave you this afternoon. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14. Pursue peace with how many people? Pursue peace with who? no one will see the law. Look it carefully. Lest anyone fall short of the grace. Let any root of bitterness spring up cause trouble. And by this many become defiled. Ah, let me love you and leave you this one. Go home and read it. Three things you're talking about. If you don't forgive, you miss the grace. If you don't forgive and bitterness set in, the possibility of you being defiled is over hundred percent. Those people that doesn't know how to forgive, they cause trouble. So pursue peace with what all men. And if you are pursuing peace. Peace is not a commodity. Peace is not a commodity. Peace is not a title. Peace is not a societal status. Peace is a person. Get that man called Prince of Peace. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will be seen in your family. Hallelujah. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, you are finished, people. Pursue him. If you can pursue Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living Lord, the peace of God that surpasses every human imagination will be your portion. Amen. If you don't know Jesus, this afternoon is another great opportunity for you. Any marriage that Christ is not centered, anywhere, any relationship, any home, any company, any business, any family that is not Christ centered, that family instead of Christ tends to become crisis. So Christ is the only one that when we pursue, we see the fullness of the Lord in our lives. May Jehovah bless you for coming this afternoon. Amen. God be with you. May he give you a heart of a child of God.
the king of kings and the lord of law help you to forgive even those people that offend you those that you have decided not to give you to forgive them may he help you so that you can forgive them even now or forever in jesus the one that died and rose again triumphantly on the table may he be with you now or forever in jesus name amen your heart is heavy Put your right hand on your heart at this moment. 